okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm a little late on this Mike Todd situation, but we need to talk about it. He had an Easter service recently that was basically Oscars-like in terms of the performances. It was very hyped. People have been p picking out clips and showing things online and getting very angry and frustrated about it. And some people are defending it, saying it was a wonderful masterpiece of artistic creativity and it brought so many people to understand the Easter story. So where do I line up on this? And where does the Bible line up on this? You know, I think recently there has been, and I just want to rant to you guys for a bit because to be honest with you, I usually kind of write out a little bit of what I'm going to say and have it a little bit uh, more curated. But right now I just, I have a lot on my heart that I need to share with you. And I think in a lot of ways, the church has been taken over and, and just infiltrated by these very charismatic leaders, right? These very charismatic pastors. There's nothing wrong with being charismatic, but when that is your primary appeal, when it is all about kind of the way you speak and the way you conduct yourself or the clothes that you wear or the analogies that you have, as opposed to the substance of where your foundation actually lies, that becomes a problem. And I think with Mike Todd, we're beginning to see, at least it's being, uh, becoming apparent to most people. I know some people were on this train from the beginning, understanding, okay, what is Mike Todd's goal here in his church, his massive growing church and becoming such a popular pastor? Where's his foundation at? Where are his standards? Where are his boundaries? We, we're beginning to see, and we also saw too, like in terms of, I, I covered a little while back, him spitting on that guy's face and uh, and then that t-shirt that he had with his wife on it in a bikini was he, as he was preaching. We're like, okay, this guy's boundaries, they, they're not really existent. He's just kind of doing what he, what he wants to do and there's no real accountability there. Or if there is accountability, it's basically accountability that says, well, as long as it kind of works, as long as it gets the views, right? Where are, is their primary standard or um, objective? Is it about getting the pragmatic results in terms of people in the doors, in terms of people saying, yeah, I was really impacted by this or, um, you know, it made me feel closer to Jesus. Or is it actually, what does the word of God say, say and I'm going to stick to it. So that's a little bit of a precursor, but let's talk about the performance in general. A lot of people were picking out clips that were very <laughs> like a demon oriented and because it was a play, right? And some people are taking things out of context. Uh, I can understand why there's a little bit of frustration for people that go to that church or want to defend that church because they're like, hey, you're, you're taking this out of context. This was the part where all the demons were talking and I, I can't really show a lot of it because it's got some copyrighted music and stuff like that. So I can understand why there's frustration there. And we need to be careful that we're not engaging in merely outrage culture, right? That's not what I want to be a part of. Just, man, Mike Todd is the, the worst and we got to stop him and, and stuff like that. And can you believe what Mike Todd did? Mike Todd did this week and, and all that kind of thing because I just think it's not helpful. I do think though for me and, and knowing my audience, um, Mike Todd has built a, a big platform, a big platform and I've seen him um, say some good stuff. I really have and and it's actually been really encouraging to see some of the stuff he's been saying on, online at least in terms of some of the, the short clips that I've seen and he's really a, a powerful speaker and he's got some really interesting analogies but then every once in a while you begin to look a little bit deeper and maybe you watch some of his sermons and you're like, like, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute, buddy. Wait a minute, buddy. Like you're just kind of pulling stuff out here and there's uh, maybe some verses here and there, but he's making a lot of the stuff up. It's like a kind of a trendy Ted talk to make you feel better about your life or maybe to get you to be a better person or it's not really gospel oriented. You don't hear him talk about the gospel very often. And that's a concerning thing for me, but ultimately going to the performance, I don't think there's anything wrong with having a little bit of a play or something like that. Um, but when it's done in this context, like at the church, what is the church for, right? Is it primary to just have this big kind of entertaining musical where everyone's singing and dancing and and we're going to do that instead of actually w what the church is for. So what is it for? I, I think of Colossians here, Colossians 3.16. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in our hearts to God. We think about that and I think it comes down to what our primary goal is. Like I was saying earlier, is it to encourage believers? Is it to spur them on in the face to faith, to, to get them out of their comfort zone, to go into the world and be equipped and be ready to, to share the gospel, to be encouraged and to be fed? Or are we appealing merely to the culture to get clicks, to get likes, to maybe even focus on only non-believers and say, oh, well, this is an evangelistic effort. 
we need to talk about too the evangelistic nature of this. Was this truly evangelistic at heart? Really? Like I, I haven't watched the whole thing, so I'm, I'm I I can't speak to you know whether they were clear in their gospel presentation. But I don't know, guys. Like uh, you're watching this and you're like, where is the attention? Is it on God? Is it on what He has? done, especially in the church context, or is it in how cool my dance moves are, look at the trendy songs that we can incorporate into this musical thing, and it's like, okay, that might be cool for Broadway, but in the church context, is that what church is for? And I think we have a diametrically opposed opinion. Of, of what it's of what it's about and uh, and you know so ultimately look I, I'm not a part of Mike Todd's church I think he said some <laughs> questionable stuff and I at this point um, would not recommend anybody listen to what he has to say I just don't think there's that wisdom or that maturity there and I say that with uh, attempting to say that with all humility recognizing that I have my own deep flaws right and I I, I need <laughs> scriptural help constantly and God's guidance constantly in order to make sure that I'm utilizing and stewarding my platform effectively and responsibly and biblically all that is apparent in my heart and my mind but at the same time we need to be careful to not be taken captive with whatever is just kind of cool or wow look at this innovative thing they're doing it they're taking christian liberty you know and that's often what it's portrayed as saying oh all the religious people are getting nervous in here because we're trying some stuff out that's what it's often like portrayed as like kind of gaslighting the audience to be like why do you guys have a problem with that oh you must be one of those religious people if you're upset with this kind of thing and it's like well no no man it's just because um i don't think this is glorifying to god i, I don't think this is putting the attention on him we talk about glory i've heard glory being described as a spotlight where is the spotlight being put and i think in this kind of context you're you're seeing the the glory the spotlight being put on transformation church or mike todd being the visionary to orchestrate something like that is it is the glory really being put on god and the sad truth is, um, this isn't the first time that I've seen an Easter service gone out of hand or, or a church try to do some big production in order to draw people in and, and get the focus on them. Uh, I've seen it in, in my city as well. And I think a lot of churches, unfortunately, would be engaging in similar things if they had the money. And, and it's just sad because ultimately, I think we need to be focused on the simplicity of the gospel. Yes, utilizing artistic, um, artistic abilities and creative abilities in it, but those should all be in service to focusing and worshiping God as opposed to distracting from him primarily in the church context, right? Like I have no problem with having to play outside of the church and, you know, people attend it and like, that's nice. And then you can talk about the, the morality of that particular play or aspects of that play. But then you look at the church context and, and you bring something like that in there and it's this big shebang with fire and lights and you're like, what do we miss? Like, what are we doing here? That's honestly how I feel. I know people feel differently. I know there's nuance to this, but I, I, I just, it doesn't sit well in my heart to be, you know, support something that, that is just so worldly. It really is. It really is. And you, you see the, even the music selection and the, the, you know, just even how they glorify the demonic aspects of that play. It's just really strange to me how, how they could kind of go about doing that. And I know they're trying to be innovative. They're trying to be, you know, breaking rules and, and doing stuff. Uh, but I, I, I just, I'm not with it. I'm really not. So those are my thoughts. I'm sorry that this video was kind of rambly, but I just had to get on here and kind of post this video pretty quickly because I, I wanted to say something about it. I think it's important. Um, but I'd love to hear you, what you guys think about in the comments down below. Maybe you followed Michael Todd in the past and you're starting to question things or you're trying to discern or is this something that I really want to continue to allow to consume in my life and, and provide input into it. And I think we should be searching the scriptures to say, okay, this is our foundation here. Let's weigh everything against what God says about his church, not what we think is kind of a cool and, and creative and innovative idea, but focus on the simplicity and the design that God has offered up to us. And that's where our foundation should be. So I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching. As always, I love you guys. It means so much to me that you support me on Patreon as well. That is a huge blessing to me. And uh, I will see you guys next time. God bless.